Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest has been breaking the silence on the issue of mental health, an epidemic that has silently plagued our community far too long. And along with the help of her celebrity friends, she created the initiative Silence the Shame. Please welcome Shanti Das. Good morning. How are you, my love? I'm wonderful. Good, good, good. So let's take everybody back. Tell yes. us about Silence the Shame and how it started. So Silence the Shame is a mental health advocacy and awareness organization. My dad took his own life when I was seven months old and my sister stepped up to help my mom raise us. And also in 2014, my best friend took her own life. Oh, wow. And then in 2015, Rashawn, I contemplated taking my own life, which wow. I think a lot of people know, but some may not know. Yeah. So I wanted to start it. I started speaking and sharing my own pain and mm -hmm. turning it into something positive to help other people. Yes, and a lot of people know you obviously from the music industry and mm -hmm. then when you left that phase of your life, the hip hop professional, and now Silence of Shame. Talk about that, that transition and how it was for you during that transition. So it's interesting, I was the EVP of marketing at Motown Records and decided to take a leap of faith. And before I left, I started this movement, uh, May We Rest in Peace. Mm. The city of Detroit had lost funding, and so I raised $30,000 to bury people um, in the morgue there. And I felt like God was moving me into a place of service, and I started feeding the homeless community and doing a lot. And that's how I started the Hip Hop Professional Foundation. Yes, yes, yes. Now, last year, you all completed a seven-city teen mental health tour with the Jack and Jill yes. um, Foundation, impacting teens. Why was it so important to make sure, why is it so important to make sure we get to our teens? It's really important because I think oftentimes parents don't know if their teens are acting out or if something is really going on from a mental health perspective. Yeah. And so with teens, you really have to pay attention to them and see if their behavior pattern is changing and for how long. Yeah. And if you see something that doesn't really look like the teen, you know, in terms of their normal daily activity, then you should seek treatment. What were you able to discover that you may not have known during that tour being with these teens? Just that, you know, the teens really, you know, they listen to us. We don't think that they do, but they're always listening and watching. Mm -hmm. And more than anything, sometimes they just need an ear. Yeah. They don't need us to fix them all the time. They need us to first listen and assess the situation and then help. Before we just come in there Before with judgment. Before we jump right in and yeah. judge them and tell them exactly what to do, they just need an ear sometimes. Yeah, because you know, the, the way we grew up is different than the way they're growing up. Because they're so connected, yeah. but to the point where they're disconnected yes. with the cell phone. And so you start so they need that human connection and interaction more now. Yeah, you start with the teen and then, you know, as a young adult, they can become better, at least know how to uh, address what they may be feeling. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, you have the podcast. Yes. Silence the Shame, and your dear sister was a guest in January, mm -hmm. and um, she recently passed away. Um, she did. Let's talk a little bit about what that interview means to you now mm -hmm. and how you go about picking topics every single time. Yeah, so we have a podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play, and in January, my sister Anjali Maria Arner was featured. She had just finished her master's program to become a master's in counseling, and the podcast was on grief and loss. Oh my gosh. And this was just in January, and she passed two weeks ago, and so I want to keep her legacy going, but who knew that God and my sister was preparing me for this moment? Yes. Because this has been the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Yeah. Um, my sister actually, um, the night that I was in crisis, convinced me to call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline to get help. Yes. And so I wouldn't be sitting here today on Sister Circle if it wasn't for my sister. Right. And so it's important for us to re be able to spread this information. And the way we choose our topics is, you know, people reach out to us on social media. Mm -hmm. We have one up now on borderline personality disorder. We talk about anxiety. We talk about pets as therapy. And so we just want to really get the information out that the people want to hear. Right, right. How have you been able to um, keep going? Uh, uh, with this work? God. Yeah. I mean, you know, Silence of Shame came to me through the Holy Spirit when I was doing an interview on V103 here in Atlanta, Georgia. And mm -hmm. at that moment, I felt like that was God placing this ministry in my lap. Never yes. in my wildest dreams coming from a career like the music business would yeah. I be the poster child for mental health. And yeah. I'm so fine with it and yeah. walking in my purpose. That's right. Because I mean, even on Sister Circle one day, you saw me break down and you literally text me like, sis, I'm I here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and what have you been able to, or what have you been able to discover about people who are in positions like ours and the darkness that they feel? So many people in positions of power suffer in silence. 
and they don't feel like they have an outlet. I can't tell you how many DM messages and text messages that I've received from a lot of our colleagues and peers that share with what they're going through or either their family members and yes. they're just afraid to talk about it. Yeah. Mental health is still so taboo in our community and it doesn't have to be. Doesn't. I tell people we all have mental health, we may not have a mental illness. Ha, ah, that is so good. Mm -hmm. That is so good because people try to combine the two. Yes. Speaking of which, uh, last year the National Day Calendar recognized your efforts and officially proclaimed May 5th as National Silence the Shame Day. Yes. That doesn't happen <laughs> just for everybody. Like, how can everyday people support what you are doing, and how did that make you feel? Well, it made me feel wonderful yes. <laughs> to have my own day. Um, but it came with a lot of hard work and support of my team members at Silence to Shame. But May 5th is this Sunday, even though it's Cinco de Mayo, we want you guys to talk about mental health. So you can support us by donating for our programs. You can text the word SILENCE to 707-070, or you can go to our website at www.silencetoshame.com yes. and click donate. Yes, yes, yes. So really quickly, you have self-care Saturdays. Yes. What does that mean? What, what is that? So I tell people, okay, Going back to we all have mental health, we may not have a mental illness. You have to take care of your emotional health and wellness on a daily basis. So every other Saturday, we do these really cool events in the Atlanta community, and we're going to start doing them elsewhere. But we might do trap yoga. We yes. may have a class for exercising, cooking classes. We had a journal meditation class full of women writing and journaling about their problems and letting their emotional stress out. It's yes. a beautiful thing. Yes, So yes. everybody can have a self-care Saturday in their own market. Absolutely. Yes. Well, I'm so glad that you are here to share uh, the amazing things that your organization is doing. Thank and you. as you continue to give to others, please make sure, and I'll be one of those people that will pour back into you. Yeah, I'm about to start grief counseling yes. next week. Good. Perfect. Thank I you. love you, Shanti. I love you too. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here today. All yeah. right. For Thank more you. information on how you can help, or if you know someone that may need to reach out to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline, please do so at 1 800 273 8255 or text the keyword silence to 741 741.